I had a chance recently to uh, share some facts about forgiveness. You know, there's a popular idea that we only forgive those that we want to forgive that they have to have some kind of special way of asking forgiveness or they have to be really repentant in order to be forgiven or that we would forgive someone in a certain way or a certain style that they have to really mean it. I mean really, really, really. (laughs) Do you really think that's true? I mean, really. We all know that God is in control. If you don't know that, you can find out pretty easy. Ask Him. But people forget sometimes in the emotion of getting caught up in a circumstance where they want to cause judgment to come sooner than what God has decided when judgment would happen. Because He waited this long, and we have become saved from ourselves and from our sins, we ought to extend, likewise, that forgiveness to others that if God has reserved judgment into a bowl that he will pour out upon the earth and that he will judge all of us, the quick and the dead, at the judgment seat of Christ for some of us, at the great white throne for others, then... Who are we to not forgive those with whom either offended us or in some way have caused us to be challenged by their sin? When in reality, our sin has been forgiven, shouldn't we forgive? He that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? And who is like... Thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou art holy, hallowed be thy name. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. I have laid help upon one that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, be glory. Insofar as God has saved us, and that God has forgiven us, that alone is why we forgive others. It's not because they deserve it. It's not because it's righteous. It's not because it's any other reason except that God did not give to us according to what we deserved, but by his mercy, he saved us. When we forgive others, we are allowing God to work in their lives to cause them to come to a place of finding salvation. And that's why we forgive. The Dew of Hermon, Mount Zion, which is Hermon. There the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth roots as Lebanon. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, as the showers upon the grass. As the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not there, but watereth the earth, and maketh forth to bud, that I may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whitherto I sent it. God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him, and of his fullness have we all received, and grace for grace. It is like the precious ointment upon the head, 
even arrows that went down to the skirts of his garments. Because grace was given us, we ought to give grace. Grace being that unconditional, unmerited, undeserved, unwarranted favor. That forgiveness whereby we see another who doesn't deserve it as much as we did not deserve it in the first place. And yet we pray for their salvation, but we extend to them grace. We offer them mercy. We pray to forgive so that we may be forgiven and that they too may find forgiveness in the Son of God. When you consider the holiness of God and the reality of hell, then it's not too, price, it's not too great a price to pay to forgive someone for their way, for their actions, for their deeds, no matter what they may be, and no matter how abhorrent it might be to you, you were in the same condition to God, for you were not perfect, and Christ died for you. Likewise, so too, for the one that we forgive, Jesus died for you.